What's going on guys? Craig here with my entry into Maggie's Anniversary Contest. First off, congrats Maggie, my big sister, my awesome, awesome friend. Congratulations. One hell of a year so far and I am so glad to have been able to connect with you not only through your videos and through the VCLT we've been able to send back and forth to each other but the constant conversations we're always able to have whether it be you know on the phone or through Facebook Maggie's been one of those awesome people that I you know wished I had that friendship when I first joined the BC you know it was those things I was really envious of saying you know knew there were people that you know talked more than just through their videos you know whether it be email phone whatever so great to have been able to establish a really solid friendship that goes beyond just the music so I love you sis and I am so glad to be able to do a response for this so basically the whole premise I'll save all the you know rigor of talking about it basically standout music moments so I really wrestle with this because there's a ton of standout music moments I could talk about whether they be finding something you know out in the wild and where that impacts my life and what it means to me or talking about a concert I went to because I've been to a lot of concerts especially with you know friends and family members um, which I mean I'm starting to think of stories now as I'm talking um, but I decided to go the route with um, talking about being a musician and you know a standout music moment me standout music moment for me and it does involve actually a piece of vinyl but it really is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart that um, just a real standout music moment that one that I can revisit in my head a lot and have good memories associated with it not all negative even though there is some negative involved so basically we'll kind of get into the, all that so VC cheer because I'm gonna ramble so uh, the whole premise of this uh, revolves around my grandfather my dad's dad um, I'll give a little bit of a backstory um, I got my first ever drums which are just a paper Muppet Babies drum kit when I was uh, four years old they were from my grandfather uh, he claims he would never say, you know, if there was a real reason behind it, like, oh, you know, your parents said you were really, you know, beating on stuff, so to get you some sort of, you know, kid drum, you know, drum set or something like that. It was, uh, he was an alcoholic at the time, and uh, later on he told me, I'm like, so why did you, you know, buy me that? Because him and my grandmother were separated at that time. And so I was like, oh, why'd you buy me the drum kit? He goes, eh, I just wanted to piss off your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so him, and it was just funny as shit. Uh, both of my grandparents, my dad's parents, uh, just spoiled the hell out of us kids. There's me and my two younger brothers. Uh, my dad was an only child, so we were the only grandkids. So we got lots of attention. My mom's side, different, you know, story. Big family and lots of other things that went along with that. So, you know, not everybody gets you know the undivided attention. You kind of have to spread yourself a little bit out. But them, they basically just, you got tons of attention. You got, you know, you were, you know, the three of us were focal points and all that shit. So, um, later on, I got my first ever real guitar from my grandma and my grandpa. Um, growing up, my grandpa was always, uh, he's always been a music fan, loved, loved all kinds of different stuff. Everything, you know, country to, you know, 50s rock to instrumental surf music to, you know, even... You know, hard rock and early metal. He's also, you know, just big into everything. And uh, he was supportive to a point of me wanting to become a musician. Um, he always gave me shit growing up, though. He was like, why don't you get a real job? You know, you should you know, be a teacher, be this, be that, you know. Really trying to enforce this, you know, solid plan of, you know, go to school, you know, because it's like, you're a smart kid, you know, stay in school. I'm you telling a kid that who wants to be a fucking, you know, you know, musician, he wants to be a professional drummer, you know, you really think I want to be stuck in fucking school? No. And no, I did not drop out if you're trying to get at that. No, I was a very good student and I wanted to, you know, go through school. I actually finished high school. I just didn't want to go to college. So let me clear that up. Um, 
But anyway, um, so over the years, once I got a little bit older and uh, started, you know, actually having some proof that, you know, the music was panning out, you know, I had stuff to show them, you know, whether it was, you know, a demo or, you know, just stuff I'd been writing and just different, different stuff. And he started to kind of get the gist, you know, he'd meet some of the bands I was in and, you know, meet my friends and kind of go, oh, okay, I get it, this isn't just some sort of fuck-off thing. Even though I also had a lot of extracurricular things that I did that he knew about and wasn't exactly proud of those, but at the same time we'd compare stories. I don't know. It was fucked up. But anyway, fast forward to um, February of 2012. So we're a couple days after my birthday and um, I get a phone call from my dad uh, while I was at work, which he apologizes to this day why he told me while I was at work. Uh, found out that my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was pancreatic and was given a week to 10 days to live. So obviously, you know, just a mind fucker. You know, you can't believe it. I mean, the guy, he'd been a, he'd been sober from alcohol, I wanna say maybe a good 20 years at that point, some of thereabouts, um, maybe a bit longer, I'm not quite sure. Um, but he'd been a smoker pretty much his entire life. Um, just, Kind of one of those out of the blue things. He lost a bunch of weight, but never we can never really pinpoint it wasn't sick or anything. It was just you know kind of losing weight. We couldn't really figure it out. And he'd been a truck driver for about 15, 16 years at that point, some of thereabouts. And uh, you know, I never really saw a whole bunch of them, anyways, throughout you know the years. But you could definitely tell there was a significant weight loss, and he had been uh, retired for about six, six or seven months at that point. So find out he has cancer. Obviously, anybody who's been through that, and you know, you're you basically know when somebody's gonna die. You're doing everything you can to you know be able to spend time with them and talk with them and everything else. And he was fine. I mean, it's just you could tell things were really starting to set in. Um, but he's still normal, just you know, his typical self. It was pretty funny. Um, but basically, he was you know bedridden, um, which sucked. But I was able to bring, uh, I had had a show about a week or so before that, and I had the video from it. So I was able to show him a DVD of some of the songs that I was playing with in my band that I was in at the time. And uh, just to be able to show him, because I knew he was going to be you know, passing away soon. So I wanted to get him, you know, show him the uh, footage and stuff, because he really made a point that once he retired, he was gonna try and get out and go to you know a few shows and stuff. Cause my dad was a huge supporter and loved going to all the shows and would tell him about it all the time. So he wanted to kind of show his support, and so he was basically given that small timeline, so he wasn't able to get out of the house enough to be able to be in good health to get to a show. So that sucked, but we really enjoyed getting to see that. It was you know really cool getting to share that moment with him hear how proud he was so that you know that really made me feel good and validated in what I was doing um, so we'll fast forward a couple of months he ended up doing really well and not deteriorating a whole bunch so I mean we you know went past the you know two week mark three week mark you know a month but we finally get into April and just things are really setting in and you can tell that he's pretty much just it's it was only really a matter of time so we get to about mid to late April and you know I went and saw him for the final time that I had the opportunity to and just you know I, I don't really need to go into all the detail we've all been there you know they're they're bedridden they're you know pretty much they're there physically but mentally and everything else they're just they're not there and he could barely talk he was so out of it and he was still smoking up until the day he died and uh, just you know, didn't even have the cigarette lit and was acting like he was smoking. I mean, he knew who I was, but he couldn't, you know, tell that it was me. And I'm just, you know, I lost my smoking buddy. I'm a smoker. So it was just really, you know, kind of odd. Just very weird. I'm standing there smoking a cigarette trying to, you know, just talk to him. And he, you know, obviously very incoherent and all that. And he's holding a cigarette, but he's, you know, basically pretending, but thinks he's really smoking. It was really really fucked up. If you've never seen that type of behavior before, it'll really fuck your head up. 
really weird. But anyway, so we get to April 24th. It was a Tuesday. My band that I was in at the time, Hindra, um, had a show that night. We were opening up for um, uh, the band that you hear in the background, Fur to Midland. And uh, another international band from Australia, um, Dead Letter Circus. Um, it was a really big show for me because it was the first one I really helped book. Um, I didn't book those bands, but I booked us on the show because I knew the promoter really well. And uh, we had sold tickets for it and everything. It was kind of a really big deal for me. We had, a few weeks before that, played uh, my first ever real big, you know, opening up for a national touring act, uh, opening up for the band I Empire. And, uh, you know, it was a big deal for me getting to see these guys, you know, watch your videos, like, listen to your, you know, listen to your music online and shit, you know, it's getting to actually meet, you know, real artists, not just, you know, not your big stars that I've met before or, you know, local bands. It was kind of like the, you know, those guys in the middle that are just doing it for a living that love, you know, love their art. So that was, you know, it was really a big deal for me. And then... Um, the fact that I've become such a huge fan of these guys, I was really excited and I only get to, you know, play the show, but get to, you know, the opportunity to meet them and get to hear some of my favorite songs live. It was just really, really cool. And the day was, um, it was really, really nice out. We had a really nice spring day. Uh, had a really good rehearsal that afternoon. Packed all the gear up, went to the show, or well, went to the venue, and uh, got there early enough that these guys were on uh, sound checking, so got to hear them kind of tooling around with stuff, and then got the opportunity to just kind of hang out with them. Not, not in any weird way. There's nobody else there except for you know the bands, promoter, and the people working at the you know at the club. So you're just hanging out. You're bullshitting. You're just talking about you know they're asking you about the area. You're talking to them about you know what you know what's it been like on the latest tour. You know where was their last stop. What you know and they're kind of perspective on the area. They've been to a local bar and were telling us what kind of a time they had the night before. It was really, really cool. And uh, and then getting to meet the guys from Dead Letter Circus was really cool because I mean, they're from Australia. I had never met anybody from Australia before. So it was really cool getting to talk to them and find out a bit about them, you know, back home and then their perspective on being in America and everything else. So that was really cool. Um, so we get into showtime, you know, pretty much your, your typical shit, you know, set everything up. We're the first band on too, which was, I like being the first band on because you know, you kind of, you get in, you get all your stuff off and then you, the whole night's yours. You get to catch all the other bands, you get to socialize, you just get to fucking hang out. Um, I never liked being the band that was in the middle. I always liked either opening the night or closing the night. There was, one of those two were always really good. Opening you know, obviously it had its perks, but then it closed, had even more perks or bad stuff. I don't know. It's just really, uh, <laughs> sorry, there's lots of stories of getting incredibly uh, under the influence before uh, the night concludes. So by the time you get up on stage at one in the morning, uh, yeah, you're, you're ready to rock. So anyway, um, so we played. It's about seven o'clock, I believe. Uh, when we went on, pretty played a pretty short set. I think it was like six songs. Uh, really great, just power set. You know, every song you just beat them in the back of the head. As soon as they've got enough time to recover, boom, hit them again. Just don't let up. Really excited about the set. It was really good. Got everything packed up, put in the vehicles, and then it was hangout night. It was just all right. Grab some drinks. Let's watch the rest of the show because we were all really excited to see the other bands and. Uh, and just hang out with some, you know, friends. Just it was going to be a good chill out night. I really needed it. At that time, I was going through a lot of stuff with, you know, my grandfather, you know, being ill, and I was busy every night working on, you know, setting up this house. Uh, I was in the process of getting that all finished up and renovated, all done. Um, and then just, you know, stuff on the work side was, you know, kind of upside down. So a night out, even though I was, you know, socializing all the time and stuff like that, a night outward. I would just be able to be free of everything. Not have to worry about anything. It was the kind of night I needed. Odd that it was a Tuesday night though and I had to work the next day, so I couldn't get too fucked up. Just fucked up enough. So anyway, 
Uh, I get a phone call from my dad. Well, actually, a text, I should say. We'll start out with this. Uh, I get a text from him just saying, you know, how did the set go? Told him how it went, said it was really good. And uh, not too long after that, I get a phone call from him. And he just kind of wants to go into a little more detail. Like, you know, how was it? You know, how, you know, how many people are out, stuff like that. You know, he's obviously a big music fan, so he wants to know all the ins and outs, what the other band's like, you know, how's the show going, everything else. So I tell him kind of that, and I ask him what's up, and I could tell there was something in his voice. And he goes, so what time did you guys play? And I said, oh, we went on about 7 o'clock. He goes, well, it sounds like you had an angel watching over you. And he proceeded to tell me that the time that we started our set would have been the exact time that my grandfather passed away. So really, I mean, it still kind of gets me now. Um, that just, you know ended it for me I'm you know you're, you're you're broken up I mean what can what, what can you say to that I mean you've been preparing for you know somebody's you know passing but when it finally happens you're just like whoa whoa don't know you're you're not equipped for it and especially being somebody so close I had lost you know other family you know members you know great-grandmothers and grandfathers and stuff like that over the years but I was close with them to a point um, being my grandfather and obviously having history with him and being so close, I wasn't equipped for that. So, and it's even worse to be outside of a bar and it's you know still obviously heavy daylight. You can't hide anywhere, and you're just sitting there, just you know, basically a broken up mess. Um, but anyway, so I kind of go through with my dad, making sure you know everybody's okay, stuff like that, and uh, that I basically proceeded to go in and start, you know, all my friends and bandmates and everybody knew what was going on, so when I told them what happened, I mean, it just, you, the am amount of outpouring and support, you know, from people around you really means the world. I mean, you can really tell, um, you know, how much people care when you go through, you know, stuff like that. So, obviously it was, I, that night out turned into a night out. It was pretty fucking crazy. But, um, just, you know, help me, I had really enjoyed that night even more, um, so we'll kind of go through the rest of the night, um, uh, great with the other bands, the other local band, Driven, buddies of ours, great guys, got to see their set, you know, so on and so forth, you know, Dead Letter Circus, great band, my fiance loves them, they were really impressed the hell out of me, so I've become a fan of them since that point, and, uh, Fred Midland, uh, just killer whacked the fuck out on stage, but really, really chill, nice guys when I got to talk to them, you know, earlier in the day, and then after the show, got to talk to them some more, and, uh, got my copy of their latest album at that time, Arrows and Anchors, signed by them, so that was really cool. Uh, I just found out recently, this was limited to, like, 200 or 250 pressed, so very cool, though. glad I spent the money to get it and get it signed. So, um, so yeah, either way, um, we talk about standout music moments, and we talk about how music associates, you know, with certain things in our lives. Like a standout moment doesn't, you know, a standout music moment doesn't have to be just simply solely about the music. And the reason I chose this as a standout moment is that not only was it one of my favorite shows that I've ever played, um, but the association that um, it's you know associated with my grandfather's passing. And, you know, and it's not a morbid thing, it's like he, the time, you know, and it's just the weird with the timing, how when he passed away, it was the time that we were starting our set, so it was almost like there was this, um, you know, he was being set free from here, and, you know, we were, you know, this whole setting free thing, you know, it's all open-ended, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he's being set free of his body and going off to, you know, his next life, and I'm starting, you know, and I'm opening up all these things musically that are out, about to pour out of me, so I'm letting it, setting the music free, so to speak. You know, this is weird. It makes more sense in my head than it does for me to be able to vocally say it. Um, and it's just that it, it, I can associate, every time I listen to this album, it, I associate it with that particular day and, you know, with my grandfather. And I listen to this album a lot uh, after, you know, in the days afterwards. Just kind of not only to listen to it because I really liked it, but also kind of relive the night, you know, like, oh my god, it was so great to be able to play and be able to meet these guys and hang out, but then also, 
that overtone of, you know, my grandfather and thinking of him and how much he impacted my life. And it was just one of those times in life where music, whether it's something that literally speaks to you and has all the lyrics that go right along with what you're going through, or it's just the music is, you know, associated with it. You know, a particular album, a particular song that you heard when you were in the car or when, you know, something happened or something like that, you know. That's one of those moments. It just so happens that I played a show with these guys and I was already into them and then my grandfather passed, so... Even to this day, I still, you know, occasionally I'll listen to it and I can still think back on those memories. I don't want to disassociate from the two. I don't want to, you know, hit a point in my life where I'm, you know, in my 40s or 50s, I go and put this on and then I don't think of that, you know, that night, you know, when I got to play with them and got to, you know, experience all these things, I never want to disassociate anything. And even if, you know, you find it a little, you know, unnerving that, oh, he puts on how many thinks of his dead grandfather, you know, um, it's, I don't want to lose that. I still want to be able to put it on and think of, just suck right back to that moment in time of where I was at and what was going on and everything. Just, a standout moment, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, before I talk any more, I want to say again, congratulations, Maggie. I'm so happy for you. I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're still making videos and happy to have you here. You mean a lot. And thank you for giving all of us the opportunity to be able to make a video and share, you know, great story. So, on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video. Everybody take care. Peace.